Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is episode 30. So in the last episode, we went over toe-in and how to get toe-in perfected for, you know, a row of seats because this is a home theater channel. So, you know, we're kind of giving priority not really to one seat, but to as many seats as we can or getting good sound to as many seats as we can. Now, of course, when you're laying out speakers and stuff like that, you know, priority does have to go to one spot in the room. You know, not everything's going to be laid out perfectly for every seat. But for the sound, you know, we use that method that we had in the last episode to try to get the most even and the, you know, the most well balanced sound we can to all of our seats on a single row. Now with multiple rows, it comes more difficult. So in the last episode, I kind of left out, you know, you guys that are just two channel guys or, you know, say you got a row of four and your two center seats, you know, are close right next to each other. And then, you know, there's like what, two or three feet of distance between them. Maybe you're not worried about those seats, you know, towards the ends. So that little method we use to get good sound, you know, to say four or five seats or across a long couch, you may not care about that because you want to get perfect sound at your seat. So that's what we're going to cover today. So we're going to kind of steer away from the home theater way of thinking just for a little while and focus more on getting good sound at one spot. So if you remember from the last episode, a lot of toe-in has to do with room reflections. The sound that's bouncing off the walls, you know, we can manipulate the amount of energy that we're sending to those walls. And the off axis of your speakers is also going to have a big impact in this. You know, this is why we want speakers with good off axis because we're using that off axis energy to make the sound stage bigger and more enveloping. So with two channel, you know, we're not going to use the pink noise like we did before and try to get it even across the seats because our goals are a little bit different because now we're working with one spot. We don't care about the other seats. So now we can really hone in on that one spot that we want to sound good and you know make the magic happen all right so let's go ahead and draw a room real quick and we'll put it that's just a corner it's all we care about here is a speaker and so here's our head we'll go ahead and finish the wall over here so these are our two mains okay now if we have good off axis you know and just a refresher here's what your off axis looks like in comparison to the on axis so as you see the further off axis we get to that speaker, we have less energy. So, you know, when you're shooting forward or when you're aimed forward, this wall is going to get more off axis energy. As you angle it away from the wall, you're going to get less off axis energy, or the energy is going to be more off axis of the speaker, and so it's going to have less energy in it because as you get more off the axis of a speaker, you know, you lose energy. So what we're doing is manipulating the energy basically that's hitting the sidewalls and we're manipulating the energy that's hitting our seats. So the trick that you can use for two channel is you can go and say watch the news or something where there's a lot of vocals. But before you do that, turn the receiver center channel off. So you basically tell it you have no center. And what it's going to do is it's going to go into phantom mode. Okay, and your receiver is going to mix whatever should be, you know, in that center channel, it's going to mix it into your mains. Basically, what you're doing is you're getting away from stereo. So also music, you can also go to AM channels and listen to like talk radio or, you know, music that's an AM, you know, as long as it's not in stereo, you can use that too, because you need these two speakers to be playing the same thing, the exact same thing. And that's going to help you really get them focused you know properly because what's going to happen is you're going to notice that by manipulating the angle of your mains the sound stage or the center like the vocals are actually going to move in the room you know if you aim them you know you may aim them straight and you notice that they fall closer to the wall or they you know they collapse you know the sound stage may collapse but when you angle them away from the wall you know that sound stage those vocals are going to come closer to you you know, and the sound stage may grow. I mean, it's going to depend on your room, how the sidewalls are treated. You know, hopefully you have equidistant or symmetrical room. You know, you don't have one side open because then it's going to be lopsided and you're not really going to get this effect. But uh, so, yeah, that's how you can do that. It's actually quite easy and it's kind of fun to play around with. But you've got to get those speakers away from stereo. If you have a stereo source and you're trying to do it like that, you know, the speaker over here may have trouble on it. This one may have some drums and the vocals, you know, going between the two. You know, you can't really do this with that. You've, you've got to get away from stereo and get into a mono. Now, when you go into phantom mode, that's why I said to go like to a news station or something like that where there's a lot of vocals. Because 
if you just go and turn your your uh, center off that doesn't mean you're going to go into mono you know you're still going to have stuff in the left that's not in the right the music playing you know it's you're still going to have a stereo effect but your vocals that should have been in the center that's what's going to be mixed to your mains so that's why it works for that but you have to be real selective in the material you use that's why i said like talk radio or something like that or infomercial you know where it's just your center is really the only thing being used that's when this works really good and like I said, go to AM. You can try that. AM stations have talk radio. There's even some music on AM. You know, that should all be mono, not stereo. So that's going to work really well to do this little trick and get those perfectly towed in for your seats. But this is also the reason that some people don't use a center channel, like maybe in their living room, or they don't want to have a... Uh, a center channel you know horizontal centers have issues off axis and you know maybe they're an eyesore for some people i purposely don't use them in my living rooms haven't in probably a decade but you know if you don't care about these outside seats and all you care about is maybe two seats right in the center of the room you know when you go into phantom mode and tell it you don't have a, a center channel you know it it's possibly going to sound better than it ever had it may sound better than it did when you had a center channel and the reason is because now you're perfectly timber matched you know, if you have a horizontal center, it's not the same speaker as the mains. I don't care what you do to it, it's same drivers, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be completely timber matched. And it's also going to have issues off axis. So when you do this and you go into phantom mode and you turn that center off, there's some benefits. You don't have the off axis issues where you have the nulls, you know, 30, 40 degrees off axis. And you don't have a timber matched issue. And, I mean, it's just something to try out. You may find that you really, really like it without that center channel. Here's some reasons why it may sound better without a center channel. But now as you move off axis, you know, your center channel, it's sending out energy this way. So, I mean, its job is to cover the seats. So when you don't have that center and you start to move out of that sweet spot with that phantom image, you know, you get it honed in just right. You move out of that and you're going to notice it so it's not going to be something you're going to want really for a home theater this is uh, you know just something for the two channel guy or if you only care about a couple seats anyway so we've kind of gotten away from just the two channel tweaking and even do you even need a center i didn't plan on doing that but they the two kind of go together it's just something to experiment with but again in a dedicated room where you know you have several seats you need good sound you need a center channel so do not think i'm suggesting you shouldn't have a center but you know for me it was about 10, maybe even 12 years ago when I was having problems positioning a center channel. So I just took the center out. Now, at that time, I was using some Rocket RS850s uh, and the RSC200, also named the Bigfoot. It was a really big speaker. Here they are right here. And, you know, that center weighed 50 pounds. It was big. So I actually, I was like, well, let me see how it sounds without it. So I took that center out and, I, you know, well, let me see how it sounds. And I took it out. And it sounded better than it ever had. And I didn't have to worry about placing a 50 pound center above my TV in my living room. And I didn't care about anyone else's seat. You know, we had a small love seat and that was directly in front of the TV. You know, the other seats off to the side, I really could have cared less if they had a nice image or a nice, uh, you know, immersive experience. It was a living room. We watched cartoons and I sat there and watched sports. We had a dedicated room. So, you know, my goals were different. So, uh, you know, I'm not advocating that you don't use a center for home theater. I'm just saying this is definitely something to check out and use the little method with, you know, the mono signal so you can get that, you know, those, those speakers towed in perfectly to really get that sound stage huge because that's what's going to happen. You know, you're going to find you're moving that image back and forth in that room and you're going to get to a point to where everything just snaps. You know, all the instruments and whatever you're listening to are going to be placed perfectly. It's like you're actually surrounded by the music. And that's really, you know, where having proper treatments and good off axis, that's where the magic happens. So, you know, we've done episodes on how to tell, you know, a poor speaker from a good speaker. And this is really where it matters. You know, when you start incorporating or tying the room and the toe in and the speakers all together, that's where something special happens. All right, guys, this is another one that's, you know, short and sweet, not much to it. After this, we're going to be going over subwoofers. And again, the reason I have to do that is because I sold my house, sold everything, gave, you know, my big towers that I loved. I gave them to a friend so they wouldn't sit in storage and rot. So, you know, but I love building, so I don't mind starting from scratch. I have to build a subwoofer 
so that we can go over Odyssey because a lot of people want to know how to how to use the Odyssey app. You know, and uh, it it can be really really awesome if you know how to use it. And that's what we're going to cover. But before we do that, I've got to build a sub. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a sub. So the next episode, we're going to get into sub design. We're going to look at some different drivers, and we're going to design a sub for me that I'm going to use. And right now, you know, I'm living in a camper and we have a small house next to the camper actually like a small building we're using that's what I'm in right now you know and it's while we're building this is what I'm where I'm at so I need something small I'm actually going to use it in here and it's going to go in my bedroom whenever we build so that's going to be it for this episode that's what's coming up in the next episode and a few episodes after that don't forget to look down in the description for links and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know the next videos come out. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this one. I'll see y'all for the next one.